physical evidence of the bullet's trajectory won't line right, up. Here's the laser and lined with the hole. Can you see it all the way? Science is so unforgiving. <laughs> the bullet didn't curve. We can see the laser down at this end. Now for us, this confirms that human speed is not going to curve a bullet. We did it ourselves. We tried it with the robot. Now it's time to ramp it up and see if superhuman strength is going to curve it. Can a sonic boom from a bullet break glass? All right. Adam and Jamie are about to find out. Right, little bullet, here is your motivation. Here's how it's going to work. We're going to put you down the barrel of this, and then Jamie, I know how you like Jamie, is going to pull the trigger. Sonic boom from seven and a half inches. At that point, I would really appreciate it if you used all your gases expanding in that direction to start traveling down this way towards the glass. Right, about 1,984 miles per hour. And three. I'd like you there to travel down the middle part of the glass, past the glass, past the glass, where the light bulbs, the wine bottle. Two. And then if you feel like it, if the physics are right and you're in the mood and you'd like to break some glass with your sonic boom, you go right ahead. One. That is a hell of a thud. A thud Adam and Jamie could feel through the air. <laughs> but a thud for which the glassware didn't care. It all looks pristine. It does. Dude, you can see the bullet. That's awesome. Shockwave would be following behind it. If we were going to see anything, it would probably be starting to happen now. I don't see any movement. I can't believe from the thud I feel from firing the weapon that I don't see a single anything. I think we've got to push way in. I do, too. Let's say four inches apart, two inches each from the bullet. Sounds good. All right. Based on the fact that we didn't see any reaction before, I don't think it's gonna break. Two inches from center, in three, two, one. As the high speed illustrates, there wasn't even the slightest tremor. I, I don't see any. I gotta say, I mean, if a bullet passed that close to me, I'd be scared to death. And those glasses, it, it, it's like nothing's happening which is enough evidence to convince our Hirsute Hoosier. At this point, I don't think the bullet's gonna break the glass. And with a glass lined up, just half an inch from the center line, contact with the banana-sized 50 caliber bullet is a distinct possibility. Three, two, one. I don't think that was a shockwave. Me neither. Me too. That looked to be a direct hit on the rig. See that right there? That's not a sonic boom. That's a bullet hit. That's where the bullet contacted the frame, started shattering glass, and the glass itself traveling with the bullet all the way down the corridor, tearing crap up as it went. Yeah, the rest of this is from the shrapnel, probably, huh? Yeah. Where do we stand? All right, well, at no distance where the bullet passed by the glass did we get any movement from the glass. Check. At this point, we don't have any evidence that a sonic boom, at least when coming off a bullet, has any significant effect on any thickness of glass. Check. King to pawn four. <laughs> Check. So this part of the myth, a sonic boom from a bullet breaking glass, is, like Adam's glass corridor, well and truly busted. After the break, it's time to go supersonic. But will it break glass? And Carrie, Grant, and Tori gear up the gunslinger to superhuman speed. Center shot. Adam and Jamie now know that the sonic shockwave from a passing bullet, if they even create one, doesn't break glass. So really, their best bet is the jet. And back at the Naval Air Facility, Adam is all set to break the sound barrier for science. Strap in. It's time to go supersonic. Meanwhile, 55 miles away in Yuma, Arizona. <laughs> oh, there's a hissing sound. <laughs> Uh-oh. 
Jamie is preparing a glass menagerie for Adam's supersonic flybys. If you happen to have a supersonic jet, you can't just go flying around anywhere you want creating sonic boom. You gotta come to a place like this, the Marine Corps Air Station Yuma, which is one of the few places you can legally do that. That's why we're here. Mythbusters, Blue Angels, test site. Plenty of space. Some nice shrubbery. Probably quite a few rattlers, but uh, we can build a house here. That ought to do it. And there's a glass window in it. Yeah, it's all real glass. And what we need now is a rundown of the test protocol. Okay, buddy. Here's the deal. Pay attention. We're here to see if we can break some glass with a sonic boom. So Adam's up in the sky in an FA-18 Hornet. He's coming in at supersonic speeds. He's going to get lower and lower with each pass. With Adam just moments away, the final piece of the prep puzzle can be put into place for the first test run. We need to make sure we get a direct flyover from the jets. So how do you do that? Well, they're going to put out some smoke so that we can see where they're at. We'll go ahead and put our smoke on right now. Smoke on. Ah, oh, there they are. And then we're going to signal them with a mirror so they know right where to fly the jet. 7, PAO, ready for 8,000 foot pass. We just got word from Jamie's team that they are ready and waiting for us. And we are just about to bypass them at faster than the speed of sound at 8,000 feet. Here we go. That's the cue for Lieutenant Walborn to do the jet fighter equivalent of putting his foot down. There goes the afterburners. Mach 0.85, Mach 0.9, Mach 1, Mach 1.03. And because Mach 1 is the speed of sound, Adam Savage is now supersonic. Wow, this is going to be cool. Mach 1.06. So as they pass directly overhead, they've got the speed they need. But with the test site a speck in the distance, the impact on the ground is distinctly underwhelming. Was that supersonic? Yeah. That was no boom. That was nothing. And we're slowing down. Back down to Mach 0.98. Ah, oh, so cool. I've heard them louder than that going over my house. Gary, Grant, and Tori have discovered that if you simply mimic the movie Wanted, you won't bend bullets. They've even built a deadly accurate gunslinging robot, giving it the exact same sidearm action as the myth, and still failed to get anything but a straight shooter. The bullet didn't curve. So next up, they're raising the bar and ramping up the robot. So the great thing about this test is that the characters are superhuman, not supernatural. I mean, they're not vampires, they don't use magic, they don't have telekinetic powers to curve the bullet. All it is is superhuman speed and strength. And that we can do in abundance. We've calibrated the rig to twice what a normal human can do. Loading the gun with the live round. Twice as fast. We'll see how that goes. Ready. All right, live round at superhuman speed. You ready? Let's get it on. Here we go, you guys. In three, two, one. <laughs> Center shot. And the paper trail once again neatly illustrates the path of the projectile. It's made it to the second frame. Yeah. Third. Yes. Fourth. <laughs> and the fifth frame. This is a good test. Let's check the alignment. OK. You see the laser? Uh, I see the laser. Despite flicking the robotic arm around at superhuman speeds, when the bullet leaves the barrel, it leaves in a straight line. And that leaves this part of the story done and busted. I know what you're thinking. You're sitting at home thinking, ah, oh, the Mythbusters gave up too soon. It was only one shot. But look, here's the reality. This robot's capable of swinging its arm harder and faster than a major league hitter. Maybe if I saw three quarters of an inch, half an inch, maybe even a quarter of an inch, it would be worth continuing on. But you know what? We're not seeing any deviation at all. It's time to move on. 
next. Mach 1.0.